Hello everyone, welcome back for another one of Xander's One Shots. Today we're going to be having a look at a game that came out quite a long time ago. It's Small World 2. Uh, Days of Wonder uh, published Small World, which is quite a fun board game. I did massively enjoy it. And when I saw that there was a digital version of Small World 2, which is effectively the same game, uh, I figured it would be worth us checking out. Uh, no, I don't want to resume the game. Before, I tested just to make sure that the game actually worked, but uh, we're going to go in with three players. I'm not player one. We know who I am. I'm Xander Sweetman. Uh, I don't have any of the expansions, but I'm interested in more in showing off the core gameplay and how well board games can translate to a digital medium. Now, the way that Small World works is a bunch of races get dealt out and then a bunch of modifiers for those races. And you take it in turns to pick these. New ones get dealt out to replace them. Everything slides up. And the further down you go, it puts money on the other ones for other players if in case they decide to pick them. So if we take Dragon Master, it's the next one out, Dragon Master Tritons. If we take Commando, one gold, oh sorry, one copper goes on to the Dragon Master, just so that because it, as it deals new ones out, they come in the bottom, if you jump straight on it, other players get a little bit of compensation for the advantage of not being able to have taken it. So we need to decide what we want to do. Uh, Commando Giants is a brilliant combination. Um, right, so to run through the special abilities, uh, Tritons, uh, any place near the sea they attack, takes one fewer army in order to do that. Dragon Master gives them basically a free conquering of an enemy place once per turn. That's pretty good. Commando Giants, everything takes them one less and attacking from on top of mountains takes one less as well. That's a very good combination and we would get 10 units to start with. Fortified Trolls, Trolls are naturally fortifying themselves anyway uh, because you can add troll layers uh, and then fortified you can then add further keeps to layers. Uh, this increases the number of uh, troops that people need to attack you with. Humans get extra money from farming. Forest humans get extra money from farming forests as well. So that's that's a good way of getting a lot of score very quickly. Ratmen have a bajillion of them. And Ratmen Merchant could do massive expansion very quickly, get a lot of money that way. And Diplopher Amazons, that would be fast expansion and annoy enemy players by declaring peace with someone. Amazons get four extra reinforcements to attack with, but they don't get to deploy them at the end of the turn. So, choices, choices. So you get ten Merchant Ratmen, so you get ten Commando Giants. You know what, I think... Commando Giants is a is a reasonable option. At the end of each turn you get uh, one gold coin for every region that you occupy. Humans, uh, sorry, forest humans will get two uh, for the forests and the fields. But I think I think Commando Giants is uh, is where we want to be. So let's start with that. So we could go straight for the mountains. Mountains make it harder to attack you as well. Um, but we'd want to go for mountains where we can get some actual advantages. Now, can I move the map? No, this is the entire map, isn't it? Yeah, that's the, the very edge there. Uh, so, if we come in here, it will take us two to occupy the territory, and that will leave us with eight left over. If we come in here, it'll do the same. We can't go in there because it's not on the coast. Come in on this one and then spread down here to that mountain. We can come in here and go to that mountain. So, looking at the other options, Tritons are probably going to be the next best thing. So, we kind of want to get Noah's really inland. Here is probably the most inland we could get to. So, if we go here and then come down this way, take these mountains. So attacking here will only take us one, attacking here will only take us one. This is inland, so if someone picks Tritons, they're not going to get that advantage. So we'll go there, then we'll take this mountain, and then we'll take this mountain for one. So we're getting 
a massive expansion at the moment. And we'll take that one for one. We'll take that for one. We'll take that for one. This is going to be a big scoring turn. And now we get a chance to redeploy our troops. I th I'm actually reasonably happy with this. I might pull one across from there and... You know, we'll, we'll defend this inland coastal area just in case uh, the Tritons try and come out of the water. We may lose this mountain over here, um, but overall, we're spread thinly, but it's going to be a high scoring round. And eight is a very respectable start, I would say. Now, ah, uh, so they've come in with the dragon. And that mechanic that you just saw at the very end there, um, if you have only one troop left and you want to attack somewhere with more, you can roll a reinforcement die right at the very end. And that'll uh, see if you can just like push on through. You get that many extra troops for that attack only and then at the end they vanish. Ten for five locations. So they they did go for the Ratman, they did go for the Tritons. So at the start of this turn, I can decide to either send my people into decline, I will miss this turn, I'll score for them where they are, and then I get to pick a new race at the start of next turn and start deploying them. And then for every one of my units that stays out, um, we carry on getting points. I've got more troops to redeploy, uh, so I could carry on pushing in and seeing how we do. That's certainly an option. If I do that though, that's going to take all of our troops in order to attack there. Or I can't attack that because it's got their dragon. I could attack here and hope that I get enough. We've lost a lot of troops um, because the way the combat mechanics work, when you attack a region and you defeat an army in there, they lose permanently one of the troops that's in there. So by keeping their forces consolidated, if I attack, the maximum that they could lose is one, two, three this turn, and they'll still have plenty left to redeploy. We lost a lot. We lost a lot, which is which is fine. That was actually part of the plan, but we need to work out when is going to be the best time for us to throw these people away and maybe go for someone else. Orcs get money specifically for killing people. Ghouls you can keep moving after they've gone into decline. You can only have one group in decline at any one time. Yeah, I, I think we'll do one more turn. That'll get us one, two, three, four, five. And then we can... Go into decline, get more people. Such a shame they came in with the dragon right on top of the mountain. The, the dragon is... A very, very powerful tool. Now, we'll, we'll go into decline this turn. It's not going to be worth it for the one extra gold. So we'll send them into decline. We get a point for each of those, and the number of armies in each location drops to one if there was more than one. Yeah. So they're expanding up around that way to fight the Ratmen. I and mean, the Ratmen are winning at the moment, but uh, the Tritons are getting a lot of points. And the points themselves are hidden throughout most of the gameplay. Batman's still doing very, very well. I think I may not win this one. Okay, so... Underworld Ghouls is an option. We 
wealthy dwarves get instantly some money. They're one to pick at the end of the game, I'd say. Yeah, if we had a way of the orcs expanding their numbers, I'd, I'd be a lot happier with them. I think we're going to go with underworld ghouls. So, we need to decide where we're going to go. Now, underworld itself, we can travel between caverns, and caverns are adjacent. So if we take this one, we can go there and attack it for less. We can go there and attack it for less. We can go here and attack it for less. We can go all over the place. So we'll start off saying hello. And this would take us three. One for the army, one for the mountain. That would take us three. One for each army. And then the mountain would take us three as well. We could get behind these guys, but I think the, the Ratmen are who we need to focus on mostly. So let's take that. And I don't want to overexpand with these either. If we take that, we'll have one left and we could maybe take... No, we'd, we'd maybe take this, because this area is nice and protected from uh, from attack up that direction. So we'll go here, and then we'll try and take this one. And we didn't get the reinforcements, but we don't lose this troop. Uh, we can put them anywhere we want, and we'll reinforce that coastal area there. So the ghouls aren't going to get a huge number, but they are adding to our pot. Ratmen, they've just... Redeployed, the Tritons are going into decline, so they're ripe for attacking. Oh no! Ratmen have redeployed. They're still quite happy getting their six per turn, so that's fine. Okay, we need to move in from these. And I think stopping these guys is going to be the most important at this point. So we'll take that. And we'll take that. And we'd need to roll a 2 in order to take this zone. I think it's, it's worth it. Yep, there we go. Redeploying troops. This is quite well defended. This is not... You've got to come in at coastal areas unless you've got a special ability that says otherwise. So this is like our bulwark. That's a secondary bulwark. This is a little bit vulnerable if someone comes in this way, but it's one one troop. So I'm happy enough with that. So that's our troops in decline, and this is our main troops. Good scoring round. Well, a better scoring round than it has been. They're taking the farmers. Yeah. Oh. Sneaky Ratman. They got... They got lucky with that. Okay. This is going to be easier for us to conquer, and we want to, to have it for defense. The other option is we go for... for this over here. Uh, we'll, we'll try and do that on the way out. So we'll get this one. And then we'll gamble on this. Oh, no, we no. didn't get it. But we can redeploy our troop to there. So they may still push up through this way, but hopefully not. Yeah. Man, they are getting lucky with their rolls.
This Akabot is winning by a significant margin on on these. Okay, so I need to look at where we can do the most damage to them. We need to get them out of those fields, really. They're going to redeploy, um, but... Uh, only that was underground. Or if we had an ability for fighting from an area. I did this is probably going to be the the biggest effect we could have on them but at the same time they're definitely going to take it back we could go into decline right now and then start focusing on our next troops we're going to lose these two if we do that which is it's acceptable i'm willing to do that uh so that we can look at where we're going to get the next best benefit and that's probably going to be swamp orcs So we lose a little bit this turn, but next turn we will get more out. And we get to keep moving these guys around. Yeah. That's so much money. 17, jeez. Okay, come on, Swamp Orcs. Let's do this. Okay, so, first of all, we get to um, move the ghouls around. And if we just actually completely cut them off here, we can bring the Orcs in and wipe out this entire section of them. And... I'm actually semi-happy with that. Let's move one down to there. Okay. Here come the orcs. Oh, this is going to cost us a lot to come in. And we can do this one and that one. If we get lucky, we oh, did no. not get lucky. Well, that was not the most awesome assault I was expecting. So they may push this way into our ghouls. Uh, let's have one there and we'll have one there. Ten gold. Not bad. Not bad. It's nowhere near what the others have been doing. Ah! That is so... Ah, frustrating. Frustrating is what it is. Oh no! Okay, so Ratman didn't quite manage to help up there. So we'll bring our ghouls up, try and take him out. And we'll bring this ghoul back over. You know what, we'll, we'll keep that ghoul there actually. Right, orcs, let's do this. One, two, oh, nope. No. Frontline them. Twenty-eight 
12. It's working out a fair bit better. Although we are rapidly running out of turns. It is only a 10 turn oh, no. game. Okay. Ghouls, we've got one, so we could try and punch these guys out. Yes! Uh, I've got nowhere to redeploy them. You can abandon regions um, completely, but um, I don't know if you can do that with races in decline. Alright, Swamp Orcs. Eliminate. And... Push forwards relatively easily that way. And then maybe come back and get these next turn. Yeah. I think you have to uh, abandon a region right at the start by actually taking troops off them. So with the Orcs, it might be more sensible for me to do that with some of the unoccupied bits back here. Doesn't matter, they've gone into decline. Yeah. Now what I can do is I can I can abandon regions with the ghouls specifically so that I can move them out of the way of the orcs and set up a, a front line. I don't think I'm going to do that. In this case, it's, it's not tactically useful for us. The ghouls up here are actually helping us out with a bit of a buffer. Uh, so instead, I'm going to keep the, uh, the front line where it is. Swamp Orcs. To go in here would actually take all three. To go in here we could do two and then push up maybe to that one. In fact, we could, uh, we could do that without too much hassle. Oh, I'm getting so unlucky with this. All right, put that in the front line. We've got the swamp land over here anyway. Ooh. They're coming in fierce, and that is all of the defense going on the front line for the trolls. That's not a lot of money, and we're very close to the end of the game. So, if I'd thought about it last turn, I could have gone into decline, and then I could have taken wealthy towards this... Oh, so yeah, this turn. Um, but... Oh, that was, that was pretty damn close. With the points hidden, uh, it's difficult unless you're good at coin counting uh, to remember who it is that's winning. You get the perception throughout the game and we kind of knew that Akabot was ahead for most of the game. But it's it's relatively straightforward to play. Uh, the mechanics are, are nice and, uh, and easy to pick up. And uh, let's have a look at the stats. <laughs> Akabot is my preferred victim. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Okay, so the, overall, it was pretty well balanced. I mean, the scores weren't massively different. And that's one of the things I like. I and mean, there are some combinations that uh, do end up a lot better. Uh, let's go in for another solo game. Uh, we'll keep the same number of bots. 
And we'll see what gets dealt out this time. Mounted humans? Wealthy wizards? Alchemist sorceress. Now, sorcerers I like because you can expand your army pool. So this automatically gives you extra coins, no specific bonus. So it's not necessarily the best, but being able to expand your army by just replacing single enemy tokens is is very good. It's not a it's not a brilliant one to open with as player one. I would much rather be player two and then lead in with this and, and try and pick off any. But you know what? We'll uh, we'll take it. So we're going to come in along the border of the map. Can I? No, I can't take over those spaces. That's that's kind of what I was interested in finding out. Um, knowing that mounted humans are going to be taking the fields, they're probably going to push through this area up here. Uh, I want to be defended. So we'll get those. We're getting a bit of extra coinage. So I think that's that's reasonable. And I'm happy enough with that. So a low start. Yep, exactly like I thought. Coming in on the fields and pushing down for the fields for maximum effect. Now, I wonder with the sorcerer thing, do I actually need to be right next to them in order to do it? Because he's by himself. Gone for the wizards! And wealthy, of course, gives a massive coin advantage right at the start, but that's a single single-use thing. Okay. Yeah, we've got to be adjacent, so we'd have to push up here and then here and then I could do it. But if we push up to here, then I can do this one. And look! He's mine now, like actually mine. And then if I do up here. Okay, and for redeploying troops. We'll want to pull one down there, definitely. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. They still lose their unit, but uh, obviously I gain one. And we will get these back. If we consolidate the army as much as possible. So actually, what I'll do... If I make... These areas... Uh, so they might go for this... I don't think they will. I think they'll focus on on what they're doing around here. He'll go, he'll go, and these should be fine. Maybe that one will go. Yep, he goes. Ah! Oh no! Not what I was expecting. Left us more opportunities for stealing people, though, which is great. Oh no! Oh, we can steal that one as well. Okay, well... Conquering regions has never been easier when you can just conquer a dude there and then you can conquer a dude there 
and now we've still got four units to push around the map. That's a... Mm, I was going to say that's a big target for them, but they're not actually going to really push in on that. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could expand our own regions a fair bit. We could actually just take another one of their units completely. Kind of force them into this corner. They won't try and take it back. They're more likely to push through the middle there. So... Redeploying troops. We'll keep it like that. We'll try and make it so that they want to go through there or through there to get to that point. They just redeployed. They're expanding a bit that way. Oh, no. So they're now immune from us stealing more troops. The humans, however, are not. So I think we'll uh, we'll take that one from them. Ah, no, they did come through. Okay, well, you're in an ideal situation. You're in an ideal situation. And this is keeping our troop numbers up, which is something that you don't often get. Quite uh, What I love doing is I love having something like ghouls and then using sorcerers to augment them. And, uh, and having the sorcerers almost be a never-ending supply can be a huge, huge boon. Okay, if we take this, this will effectively eliminate them. We could definitely take one more of these guys. And I think they would possibly try and come down here, but they'll be spreading themselves thin again. But if I take this, it means I don't need to reinforce this one down here. Alright, where are we going to redeploy to? Yeah, because they'd have to... They're, they're not going to redeploy. They're just going to sit on what they have or maybe going to decline. So I need to look at the other ones up here and what they're going to do. So let's have that there and that there. Now, obviously, we are spread quite thin at this point, but for... Yep, they're going into decline. Great. So we get a little bit of time, they're going into decline, to augment our numbers. Ah, oh, we can't steal them when they're in decline. Well, we want to reduce the amount that they're going to be getting in score. And for redeploying, anywhere's as good as anywhere else at the moment, I guess. Go along the edge up there. Five turns we've run these sorcerers. Triton's coming in. Oh, wow. Well, we'll steal that one. But that was, uh, that was quite the coastal assault there. And the Hawks are gonna... Hawks are gonna murder through everything! Damn it. None of them are safe. Is it worth us? Switching at this point. I mean we can we can try and invade another area. 
but because we've lost so many and they're not spreading out thin, and we we were fine when we got in a good place at the start, but being so so thinly spread and getting hit by both of them going into decline on the same turn, that's that's the difficulty. I think I think we'll go into decline. We're in good places, where we are, and we should have enough time to exploit. any new race that we get to put out. Question is, did we get a big enough advantage at the start? Okay, so... Seafaring allows us to take the seas, interesting. So that could have been good at the start of the game. Underworld halflings, you get many, 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 many halflings. Elves, you never lose all of them. So maybe we should be merchant elves and try and maximize the amount of money we get. And we could we could push round up through this way through effectively unoccupied territories. Try and eliminate what they're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do three down to there. And we'll do... Let's gamble on it. Yes! Alright. Uh, redeploying troops. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter because they're elves. Let's, let's put one down there. No one's going to make it across to us. But we need to start spreading these out wider. Oh no! Really capitalizing on how many we've got. Okay, so you could go for a little bit and then we could push into there as well. Uh, we'll redeploy all the troops to the front line. And we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. A very respectable score. Oh, finally lost that one. Orcs are going into decline. Okay, with three, we can just take this. If I pull one more back, we could maybe gamble at getting into another region as well. I want to encourage these guys to go into decline so they don't really have much opportunity to use their final bits. Let's pull one back. We'll go here. And then we'll... Gamble on getting this guy. Yes! 
And for redeploying troops, we're not actually threatened, I mean, sort of threatened equally on this side and that side, I guess. I don't think the Tritons are going to move on us. So playing a little bit aggressively to try and reduce the amount of final score that the Orcs are going to get. Here come the Giants! Now we do get all these elves back, so I'm not that bothered. And because it is going to be our final turn when it comes around to us, we just want to get as many properties as possible. Which is going to mean that in there, and this in here actually. And then we could like gamble for here and try and reduce it a little bit more. We get an extra one, they... As you know, this penalises one player rather than adva uh, advantaging us. So let's go there. Fifteen big scoring rounds. And they're just going to have enough time to deploy. We don't care where they go. And if they're overwriting their own, then it would be funny. They're not. They're overwriting the blue. Yeah, we're getting these elves back, but it's, it's not going to be for any reason. Because we don't get another turn after this. And, fingers crossed, when we tot it all up, victory is mine. You know what? Yeah, record it in the leaderboard. Uh, so, this has been Small World 2, a fun board game that's actually made quite a good transition onto PC. Uh, there is a whole bunch of different uh, play modes. If you've got people around, you can do the pass and play. Um, you can also play online and uh, and just do general local stuff. But the AI is intelligent enough that uh, you actually get a good number of uh, games against them. And there's a lot of replayability in it because of the way the races get dealt out. Uh, if you are interested in picking it up yourself, uh, there will be a link in the description below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do so using the buttons in front of you shortly. Uh, this has been another one of Xander's One Shots. Uh, if you are enjoying these, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for something completely different. I'll see you soon.